Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Mishmash Monday. Got a couple things we want to talk about today. Uh, first thing, uh, my buddy Ben over in the UK, Tool Addict is his channel. Uh, he was showing some of the things he got the other day, some of the acquisitions and whatever, but he showed an old steam engine that he bought and uh, he just liked the way it worked and things like that, but he wasn't running it. And I said, oh, you, you know, that's only half the fun. Steam engines are, f are fun, but especially if you run them and, you know, you just got to hook up a little compressed air. I thought I would go upstairs and um, and just show this for Ben to how he can hook up some compressed air to his engine, get it running. Let's go upstairs and do that. Now, first. when you first start getting into metalworking, you want to build things just like if you get into woodworking, you want to make stuff and metalworking. Some of the things that you want to make is like a steam engine is real good practice to get used to working with the lathe, the milling machine. You could even do it like I did with my first engines on a drill press with just a file. And these are called casting kits. And what that means is they cast out. This is just the way you would uh, do a full size engine. You know, it could come in any size that uh, that you want. But they would come like this. This is called a, a casting. And this one here is made from a uh, bronze. And, and then what you would do is you would drill out the holes and face off here and use that. And it gives you. And here's the uh, cylinder. You see the cylinder comes with a rough hole in it and you got to drill it out to the right size and ream it and then you got to you know put the caps on here and each step it you know it uh it's a lot quicker than if you would do it from just bar stock from scratch but it's still it's a good exercise here's a, a little twin aluminum oscillating engine i'll show you upstairs i did that without before i even had a milling machine or anything and uh it comes with plans to show you you know how the uh how it goes together and what's really interesting it comes with actual blueprints here's the actual blueprints that you could see it comes with this is a full size full scale and you could see it tells you exactly where to drill the hole you know and to where, what to ream it and you know and and all this has to be done in pre precision in order for this little engine to run right and it's a lot of fun but let me show you, uh, they're all steam engines are made to run because steam is nothing but like a, uh, a compressed air, but hot, you know. <laughs> and, and this here, you can run a compressed air on all your engines just to test them out and to work them Now, the home. first thing you're going to need if you want to start to try to uh, test out your, your steam engines at home is a small compressor. Now, you don't need a compressor like you would need if you were using body tools or one of those. Those you need a really good compressor. But for small steam engines, model steam engines, you just need a, a smaller compressor, but you want something that's really quiet. I'll show you a few of them. And uh, you need a way to get the uh, air from the compressor to your engine. Now, this is my air accessory box. And in here, I have everything that if I'm going to do any kind of air work or change tires or anything, uh, you know, check air on tires. I have most of that in this box here. If you wanted to fill up, look, remember these? We were always losing these, weren't we, as kids? This is to fill up a football or basketball. But uh, I put it on one here, you know, so you have different things. But you're going to need a, a small regulator. And I made a couple of these up you know you can just this is just a valve that will regulate the air and then on here uh you can put an accessory on to go to your motor and things like that i'll show you that upstairs but um one of the things you're going to need is some hosing or tubing and you could buy the regular silicone tubing at a hobby shop or online but believe it or not uh whenever you go to the hospital they're always throwing these away you know even though this is brand new they're throwing grab these you know this is uh the tubing that they have or even if they use it one time on you and it's nothing contagious grab that tubing because this stuff works great so let's go upstairs and 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 run some compressor we're going to be using today and you can see this is a, a roll layer but it's a, a very quiet compressor um and you and they're very simple the compressors they have an on off switch here that's uh, your on off switch. It also has a, a safety valve in case the pressure builds up too much. Um, and this will shut off at a certain de a predetermined pressure. Um, it has a, a, a valve here, a gauge that shows exactly how much air is in the, the, uh, the tank. And then you have a secondary gauge here. And this is con uh, controlled by this little valve here. So if you wanted to have a constant flow of 10 PSI, then you would just turn this till it gets to 10 psi and that's what will come out of here so but if you're using like an air gun or something you usually leave this wide open and uh, again this is a single tank so it doesn't have a lot of reserve to it but it's a very quiet it was inexpensive and uh, this is what we're going to be using. One note when you first get your compressor the first thing you're going to do 
is you're going to buy a set of these quick couplers and uh, you're going to put one on your air compressor and then your hose is going to have a male and a female on the hose so you could just plug it in just like you do if you go to a gas station or something like that and you don't have to worry about screwing it on every time that you use it so you get uh, a set of these they come usually uh, a couple females and a bunch of males and then you can put your males on your specific tools that Some you're going to use. Some of the things use. a basic compressor can do is you can fill up your tires obviously with uh, like this you plug this into your hose in and then you could fill up your tires you could do that I got two of these you could um, fill up your uh, pool floats things like that using this or you could slip a hose over uh, you could blow off uh, any machinery or things like that using one of these again you just clip this into the hose and uh, these are what I was talking about this is the males that uh, you can attach to different accessories. Okay, I'm at my upstairs testing bench. You know, I like to come up here. This is where I do a lot of light bulb testing and stuff. I just got these, these uh, LED one watt light bulbs. And these are great for uh, any kind of, like over here, like you see here, if you want to put in uh, inside of a globe or something, and you can see it's a nice little bulb. They call them for string lights, only one watt. Uh, these are the engines we're gonna look at in a minute. and. Uh, and we're going to hook up. First thing you want to do if you get one of these is you want to uh, first thing oil it up a little bit. And you can use any kind of oil because you're not using steam. If you're going to use steam, you want a special kind of oil because of the hot steam. But here you can see any moving parts. You're going to take some uh, some regular lubricating oil, anything that lubricates, including the shaft. You never have to worry about having too much oil. There's a little oil hole in the top here. You put some in in between any crack where there's going to be movement. Don't be afraid, especially if it hasn't been run in a while, to add a little extra oil. And then where the import, where the uh, air goes in, you're going to put a, just a couple drops inside of that port to uh, lubricate the cylinder. Then you're going to run it with your fingers just back and forth like this until everything's nice and smooth. And then you can hook up your air line. There's going to be an in, intake and an out. Uh, and an exhaust but uh, this is the intake here and we're going to hook up the airline and then we'll now you might uh, hear the compressor kick on in a moment but that that's okay but uh now that everything's nice and smooth over here we'll just uh, add a little bit of air you know and just uh and just give it a turn and there we go it's running nice this is a special t engine a little bit more air here and uh again this hasn't been run in probably a couple years but you can see it runs very nice and there's the compressor in the background, not too bad. And uh, that's how this engine runs, so that's all you have to do. I hope, Ben, you get and run that twin you got. It looks like such a nice little motor. This is the first steam engine I ever built. I didn't have a lathe and I didn't have a uh, milling machine. This is all done with just a drill press and a file. And uh, it was a kit that they sold. But you can see this was a switch plate. It was all, it was sheet metal. You bent around to make the, the burner housing. And then it was a piece of copper tubing. And, and, uh, and you had to make your own safety valve. And I got to tell you, I was very proud of this because it, it uh, I, like I said, I made it without any uh, real tools that you would use. And here's where you would put the water in. You would put some uh, some uh, heating tablets in here and the fire would make it run. Let me show you how that now runs. I should have a, a proper adapter, but I'm just going to hold this here with my finger. You're going to hear some air leakage, but it should run. Give it a little spin. And there we go. That's my first steam engine. Quite proud of that. It took me uh, quite a while to make back then. I could do it, you know, in half the time now, if not less. My next, this is the next one I did. I think I had a... Uh, I think at the time I had a um, uh, a lathe at this time because I did spin this out and but I didn't have a milling machine and that was a little tough because you had a and that has to be really flat but I uh, got the tolerance is pretty right let's run this see how it runs this is called an oscillating engine because it oscillates back and forth let's try this one out now these tend to leak a little bit because of just the design of the engine they leak a little bit of air but you can see here there's the exhaust you can hear it coming out the exhaust but you can see it's a nice smooth runner runs really nice you can always up the if you up the air obviously you up the speed I'll let you hear it without the compressor so you can see it's a, it's a nice little runner they got these running all day at the show and easy easy engine to make a lot of fun I started getting better. This is 2001 I made this and I started designing my own. This is all bar stock. It's all custom, you know, there's nothing that's uh, that I didn't make, you know, so 
here we are we're gonna and this screws off that you can put lubricant in there and it'll lubricate the shaft and it's all done on that's this when I first got the lathe I was having some fun let's see how this okay works. let's start this up here let's see it's self-starting and you can see how that runs in the back an oscillating design turn it down a little bit slow it down I like them when they run nice and slow look at that that's a nice little running motor isn't it there's a compressor kicking on again but uh Nice little engine. I was pretty proud. I, I did a bunch of these, and uh, just because I used to like to practice on the lathe. Let me this show was you the last in a, of the series I made, and you can see here I made a. This was a piece of a two-inch bar stock uh, for the flywheel. Use a lamp finial for the top, and uh, actually the piston is just the shaft of a, a bolt here. You can see I made that, and it's an oscillating engine, just like the other ones. And uh, this has hidden plumbing. You can see here. Again, this was made in 2001. Pretty cool. Let's check it out. And these are all reversible. All you have to do is switch the air line and it reverses Let's it. Let's try this one out. See here. Pretty interesting. Runs nice. Again, I haven't had these running in years, so it's always nice to, uh, to run them around and let them work out for a while. Next up we have the king of the model kits and this is called the Stewart engine and these are just absolutely beautiful. I didn't finish, I didn't put this on a plaque or anything, but uh, these are just gorgeous, you know, and, and again, you know, oiled up, if you get, if you, uh, just there's little oil ports here that you can oil the, uh, the actual rods that uh, drive them, so you, you always drop an oil in there. You don't have to worry about putting too much oil in, especially in the beginning, if you haven't run it in a while. So um, let me see if I can get this. Uh, I got a, I, I don't have the pipe that fits in there, but I'm just going to shove the air hose in, see if we can get this to run a little bit. You got to see this. Running. Okay, we got it running. I should have it actually bolted down, but isn't that nice? Listen to that. Sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah, I love these Stewarts. Now I didn't build this one. This was a repair that I did. It was a, it was needed a repair, and I did. And it just it was such a nicely made little simple motor. Again, all simple bar stock. And uh, look how nice this one runs. Let's turn it down. Nice little oscillating engine. Listen to that sound. That's a beauty, isn't it? This is why Ben needs to get his uh, his engine running. This is what it's all about. And then you really you slow it down as slow as you can go, and that's that's where it's really fun. Oh yeah. That's just that's too much fun. Later on, I got interested in some turbines, and look at this little kit that this guy put out. I don't even know if he still makes it anymore, but uh, look at this. That's done on a CNC, and you can see it's almost like the Tesla design. But uh, all you do is you hold your air hose here, and you can you can get some good RPMs up. Let's see if we can get this to work a little bit. Isn't that amazing? I love that little engine. These are some other steam type turbine engines and there's nothing like the sound of a turbine. Let me fire these up just okay, so you can Okay, the one thing it. is these do require a, a little bit of air so it might uh, kick on the compressor, but let's see if we can get this thing, what it sounds like. How cool is that? Okay, so I shut the compressor off for this one because I do not want you to uh, be distracted from the sound of this beautiful turbine. I mean, this you're going to love it. You ready? Let's fire it up.
<laughs> okay. Now, if you don't think that's awesome, then you're on the wrong channel. Oh my God, that's beautiful, isn't it? That was a uh, pretty fast 15 minutes to go by, and uh, I hope that helps uh, Ben and anybody else that uh, has an old steam engine and wants to get it running or just wants to have some fun because they really are a lot of fun. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.